Okay, thank you, Richard. Sorry. So, um, welcome everybody to uh, this fourth uh, day of um, postdoc short talks. So, today our first speaker is uh, Jing Yang Park, and she will speak uh, remotely on the asymptotic enumeration problems on the hem and cube. Please. Okay, thank you for the introduction. So, I will talk about some asymptotic enumeration problems on the Hemming cube. And this is my plan for today. First, I will talk about some histories or background of my work, and then I'll state some of my results. And then I'll talk about some questions that I'm interested in. Okay, so this is the historical part. Let me introduce Dedekind's problem. So here we use this n for the set of one of two n, and an antichain is a subset A of a partially ordered set such that any two distinct elements in A are incomparable. So for example, let's consider the power set two to the n as a post set with this natural order. Then first, this collection is an antichain because there is no containment between any elements. On the other hand, this collection is not an antichain because you see why. So an easy way to get an antichain uh, of two to the n is to take a collection of sets with the same cardinality. So for example, let's pretend that this is the picture of two to the n as a post set. So we have this empty set at the bottom and n at the top. Then for example, if we take some sets from the same level, then this forms an antichain because there is no containment between any elements. Okay, and 18, in 1897, Dedekind asked this question, what's the number of antichains of 2 to the n? And so this number is called Dedekind's number, and we use m of n for this number. So uh, the exact, num exact value of this number is known for n up to 8. So here you see that this is a rapidly increasing sequence. And in general, the closed formula for m of n is not known. So people were interested in the asymptotic formula for m of n. And here, when we look at log of m of n, we see that this n choose n over 2 is a trivial lower bound of log m of n. Because, so for example, as before, let's say this is the picture of 2 to the n. So we have the empty set here and n here. And consider the middle layer of this post set. Then as I said, any subset of this middle layer is an antichain. So from here, we already have 2 to the n choose n over 2 many antichains. So this is a trivial lower bound of log m of n. And in 1975, Kleitman and Markovsky showed that this is an upper bound or log of m of n. So this upper bound matches with the lower bound, this trivial lower bound. And later, Korshnoff and Sapojenko showed, found, proved the actual asymptotics of m of n. They showed that m of n is asymptotic to this quantity. So here I just put n even case because n odd case is even longer. Anyway, of course, when we compare this actual asymptotics and the logarithmic asymptotics, of course, actual asymptotics is much more accurate. For example, when we look at the expression here, so this formula gives us the exact main term, main term. On the other hand, when we look at this expression, the right hand side only it does not give the precise information about the coefficient of the main term namely 2 to the n choose n over 2. And in general, finding the actual asymptotics is much, much harder than finding logarithmic asymptotics. OK, then let's move our attention to the Hamming cube. And here are some basics. So we use QD for the d dimension of Hamming cube. And this is defined in this way. So QD is a graph whose vertices are binary strings of length d. And two vertices are adjacent if and only if they differ in exactly one coordinate. So here you, you see, we see the picture of Q2 and Q3. Sorry, could I ask a question? What was Dedekind's interest? Oh, so 
as far as I know, he wanted to count the number of monotone Boolean functions in, with n variables. And this, so here counting anti-chains is one of the variant of that. Okay, thanks. Thank you for the question. Okay, so may I continue? Yeah. So, so we are at, we are now we are with the Hamming cube and this, so, okay, it's easy to see that 2D is, the Hamming cube is bipartite on E union O, where E is the set of even vertices, where an even vertex is a, is a binary string with even number of ones in its coordinates, and O is the set of odd vertices. So another way of drawing this Hamming cube QD is this, we can put E here, this is the set of vertices, this, and O here, and all of the edges are lying between these parts. There are no edges inside E or O. And finally, the number of vertices of QD is 2 to the D, and we will use big N for this quantity. So in this talk, big N always means the number of vertices in the Hamming cube. And we are interested in counting independent sets in QD. So here, an independent set is defined in this way, a set I of vertices in a graph such that no two vertices in I are adjacent. For example, when we look at 2D, if we choose this, this, and this vertices, then this is an independent set because, sorry, because there are no edges between them. On the other hand, if we choose this and this vertex, then this is not an independent set. And an easy way to get an independent set in QD is to take any subsets of E or O, because as I said, there are no edges inside E or O. And when we look at this, the notion of an independent set in a graph is quite similar to the notion of an anti-chain in a post set. So people are interested in counting independent sets in QD, and what's known is, so, and in 1983, Kirshenov and Sapochenko found the, uh, the asymptotics for this quantity. So they showed that the number of independent sets in QD is asymptotically two times scale root of E times two to the N over two. And what's interesting here is that we have this Euler number E in this counting problem. But unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about this. But let me point out this one thing. So here, this value is actually an easy asymptotic lower bound of the number of independent sets. And let me show you why. I'm sorry, I'm not going to show you why, but let me just show you some construction. So here, actually, here, this 2 to the n, sorry, 2 to the n over 2 is a trivial lower bound of this quantity because, as I said, Whenever we choose some set inside O or E, then this is an independent set. And from here, we already have this many independent sets. Then where does this two come from? Because we have two parts. So this is again trivial. Then this still root of E says that there are more independent sets than this construction. And this is not so hard to see. And let me show you the construction. So for example, let me, um, for example, let's, let me choose some small number of vertices in one part so that they do not have a common neighbor. And then we choose some vertices from the other part. Then this is an independent set and it's an easy calculation shows that the number of independent sets from this construction is asymptotically square root of e minus one times two to the n times two. Sorry, n over two. So the main task of Kirshenov and Sapochenko was to show that the number of independent sets which are not from this construction is negligible. So this, which implies this trivial lower bound on the right hand side, is actually the truth. Okay. Um. Okay. Then. So the, what's so hard? So here, when we look at this construction on the screen, then what makes, what makes the computation easy is that this assumption. We assumed that all of the vertices in 
sorry, all of the even vertices have disjoint neighborhood and it made the computation very easy. But in general, when we choose some even vertices, not so small number of even vertices, then they have some common neighbors like this. And in this case, it's very hard to control this situation. And this was the, always the main obstacle of my work. So I did some asymptotic enumeration questions and the main, obst main obstacle was always to find the way to control this chaotic situation. Okay. And let me, let me state one more thing about this theorem. So actually this theorem is not just about the number. It tells us that actually this above, the above formula tells us the structure of the family of independent sets in QD, which means, so let's say this red circle is the family of independent sets in QD. Then in the previous slide, I said some of the independent sets are purely odd, which means are entirely contained in this odd part. And some are purely even. And some are almost odd, which means I showed you another construction, which means we have some small number of odd vertices which, are, which have disjoint neighborhoods and some even vertices. And some are almost even. And here you see this blue dot. This corresponds to the other independent sets. And Korshin of and Sapochenko showed that the fraction of this blue dot is li little of one. So this tells us that uh, the, this collection of independences in QD has this nice and clean structure. Okay. Now let me state some of my results. So this is joined with Jeff Kahn. First, we showed that the number of four colorings of QD is asymptotically six times e times two to the n. And second, we showed that the number of maximal independent sets in QD is asymptotically two times d times two to the n over four. So I don't have time to go into the details, but let me point out two things. First, the logarithmic asymptotics for the above two questions were already known. And it only used the fact that QD is irregular. And our contribution was to find the actual asymptotics of the two questions. And for that, we had to use very, uh, the structure of the heading cube very seriously. And the second point is this. So the two, que the two questions were conjectures of Engbers, Galvin, and Ilink Katkan, respectively. And those conjectures were based on basically the same theme. As, the, as counting independent sets, namely here we want to estimate the size of some given family. And there is some natural subfamily of this original family, which is easier to estimate. And from this natural subfamily, we have a lower bound. And people believed that this lower bound should be the truth. And so what we showed was indeed the contribution from the other members of this collection is negligible. So this natural subfamily is indeed the typicality of this original family. Okay. okay, so here are some questions that I'm interested in. First, uh, there are some asymptotic enumeration questions which are related to my work. So for example, I'm interested in the number of antichains in k to the n rather than 2 to the n, or what's the maximum number of maximal independent sets in regular graphs in general, not just QD, or counting maximal independent sets in the middle two layers of QD rather than the entire QD. So there are some questions. And the second part is, uh, so I didn't have time to talk about it in this talk, but our work is very closely related to some isoparametric properties of the Henning cube. So for example, we proved one new isoparametric inequality on QD, and I would like to continue on this direction. This is all for today, and thank you for listening. Questions? How do you exploit the uh, Hemming cube, do you use harmonic analysis or geometry or what? Oh, uh, 
uh, it's more like probabilistic combinatorics. But at what point, I mean, what do you use about the Hemming cube? What structures? Oh, okay. So we based on, so here in counting independent sets, Korshin open and Sokoshenko used some um, isoperimetry on the Hemming cube. So, and our work is basically based on that idea. But for example, counting colorings, we use some entropy argument. And for this counting maximum independent sets, we use some properties about maximum independent sets. So these are from com extremal combinatorics. So for each question, we needed some specified argument for that object. So it's not something much more general. Oh, you, uh, so Korshinov and Sapojengo's argument is quite general. That's for, yeah, but our, our method was quite specific for this question. Do you do you expect that the uh, graphs with a very large uh, symmetric uh, uh, group of automorphisms will have a very large uh, number of independent sets? Is there any connection to you that can use high degree of symmetry? Oh, uh, so for counting independent sets, so count so in general counting graph homomorphism so counting independent set is equivalent is a part of counting graph homomorphisms and that part is quite so there that part is quite well known among people and i think uh, so i so i think could i yeah so could, uh i think he wants to ask do you ever use a spectral gap <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, is there anyone who counts like maximal independent sets and things like uh, communicadrons or higher group orders or the Q sun is the zero I, I'm sorry, I, I can't hear your question. Yeah, that's not the right answer. Maybe you want to come over here to closer to the uh, okay. Sorry, there's a noise and I can't hear your question. Yeah, he's coming closer to the microphone. Sorry. I was just that's good okay i was just going to ask uh, uh there's sort of if i think of the cube as being the zero through hot order and if you look at paths from zero 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 to one 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 you get the symmetric group and this can be given the structure of a nice graph you, you know using the permutahedron and there's higher analogs do people ever count these independent sets questions the other chains questions in these other post sets is it related Oh, so as I said, I'm not sure about that specific question, but counting independence sets is quite well known areas. So maybe we can find some results regarding that, but I, I don't know the answer for that question. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay, I, there are no more questions. Thanks again.